Alrighty, I'm Nevers and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Last time we started with the trial and it was a caretaker and then he fell asleep so we couldn't do that anymore. We want to karma tried to mess things up again and luckily we have Larry. Or unluckily we have Larry because he tends to mess things up. Here we go. <laughs> What is now back in session? Witness. Please let's find the court about everything you saw. On the night of December 24th. Alright, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. Need to admit it. But you're a last chance. Hawkover didn't even have time to prove his witness. I hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Witness testimony. Night of the murder. That night. I was out in the bottom lake. I took for something, and I found it. I quickly slipped the boat back at the rental dock shop. And then, just when I was thinking going home, I heard this bang. I looked out of the lake, and I did see a boat. And then I heard a single gunshot. Oh, after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin to cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? Larry, I have no idea what he's gonna say for Preston. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Where have I come this far? There's no way... Oh, there's no way to go before with Nick. Cross-examination, the night of the murder. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. There's so many things wrong that I don't even know where to begin. Uh, well, okay. Mr. Hall, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went on the boat. By the time everyone had gone home for the night. I went to the coast to clear, so to speak. And why were we on the boat such a late hour? I was looking for something, and I found it. Looking for something? <clears throat> Mr. Boss, what was it that you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. It's like he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth in this sense. It's all irrelevant. Let's get this over with. I quickly slipped the boat back to the rental shop dock. And what time was that? Oh, uh, let's see. I figured I was out searching for about an hour. It was around 12, yeah. Not sure. Hey, if I could have a I'm not so sort of here with Sunday, okay? Who can use watches these days, Larry? And just when I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Oh, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know? Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Oh, the bottom lake. Order, order. Oh, Mr. Oh, oh. What is calm down, okay? It was really foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat there or not. Okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. After I heard that single gunshot, I went home. There's two. A lot of said. Two gunshots just after midnight. Objection! Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You sure? That's what I said. There's a lot of heart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. Oh man, it just us it's the same thing. Both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? You've been listening. Were you, paying were you paying attention at all to what they said? Oh, Nick, please. Hmm? That sounds bothering me. I'm going to see. I got some of them. Yeah, it should be nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Boss. What? I only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um, I thought it 
the truth, so I'm not sure. Huh? I'm not sure. How would you not be sure? Oh well. I might have missed the other one too. I was saying to something else. Something else? A radio, dude. My headphones. What? Order, order. Stop that booing. Superbots. You're listening to the radio with your headphones. Yeah, so what? Got a grab? Where's my radio? No one listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Devon Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. Do I accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony? Almost so right. We to continue with the testimony. Continue. <clears throat> your Honor. Please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Hmm. I think it's more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know what he lost. Here, Wolf Spots. Please give your testimony. Be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there was any other way out of here, believe me. What is testimony? What Larry heard? And lonely. Being alone on Christmas Eve. I was listening to an all request ra show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud, like. I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You're listening to your radio. At a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? I may listen to the radio in peace. In this free country. I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem is here. Judge. I don't believe a word the witness says. What he heard is probably nothing more than a drumbeat of the radio. Or enough, it is difficult to believe this has to be. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs. At least he should if he was good. So he would have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Red. I believe I'm continuing the charade. Technically, it's not a charade. That's examination. What Larry heard. Oh my god. Lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. <laughs> well, hope I'd be lonelier. Hi, you turn on the radio. Good. I just want to hear someone's voice, you know? I don't know what it's like out there, alone on Christmas Eve. Alone. I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to an all press radio. All for it. That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, you see? I need to just remember the name of the program you're working on. <clears throat> it's nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. It's actually sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That's all we need to know. Yeah, this was supposed to loud was your radio that night. I was listening to it real booming loud, like. Hold it! Real booming loud? Yeah, you know. Yeah, headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything when we were outside at all. I sure heard that gunshot. Did <clears throat> you believe that? No, no, it's cute. And I can't believe it. I remember the moment very clearly. You know, I was talking about it. It came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. What did she say? Mr. Wright, he sees this point, these pointless questions. The possible good could know what a radio DJ said do us. Indeed, Mr. Von Carter has a point. I love the question only if there should be a reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well. How do you know if we don't ask? Fine, very well. So let's please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? So she said, Hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. It, 
hey, it's almost Christmas. Pause, 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 because she said after midnight. One at midnight and one at 12.15, yeah? You. 12.30 and 12.33 What I broke down, which is not helpful to us right now. It's so good, the two shots heard. I want to use this. I have plenty of life. It's gonna knock me down, but here we go. Take that. Objection. Oh, objection. Whatever. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Hmm? What's with that face? It looks scary, dude. Are you trying to scare me? Wait, no, I don't scare that easy. It's in the master. It's in the matter, Mr. Wright. Your Honor. Did you hear what the witness just said? Did you just said, "Hey, it was Christmas." When you heard the gunshot. Indeed, Anne. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? I heard the gunshot. It was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts with the two testimonies we've heard so far, you know. Both Miss Hart and the old man said that it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. Clear contradiction, Your Honor. <clears throat> order, order. What does this mean? The witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. First, the answer is simple. I heard a witness is painfully mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. Um, I feel like a mirror is in order. What? Mm. What do you think of this claim? You had the gunshot before midnight. Cause let's let's think about this real quick. Two shots went off. One was obviously after midnight. But one could have been because it was almost Christmas, so it could have been 59. 11.59. And the sound came to them at midnight. So I feel... Hold on, let me... What we have? Ah, oh, yes! This one! So this one could 100% be true. Because we have the lake photo. The other one's not here. But the first, or the second one is. So the, the gut shot at the lake happened at 12.15. This one happened at 11.50. So yes, it could 100% be true. Is correct. I'm not mistaken, Your Honor. You're at the gun shop before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence that there was a gun shop before midnight. Well, take that. Take that. Look at those photographs. I was taken by a witness yesterday. It was a lot of heart with her automatic camera. The photo is December 24th, 11.50pm. Huh? But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in the photograph. It's why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set off to go in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That's why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard the gunshot, when it was definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed. We assume that is the case. But what does that leave us? It's hard to justify that she heard the gunshots after midnight. I claim that she is mistaken. Not at all, Your Honor. But the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. That night, there were two sets of gunshots, with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Be fooled, Judge. That camera is said to respond to loud noises. Yes? No, no, no. 
There's no proof of a loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed through the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Red, there's no turning back now. <laughs> Don't say it like that! Can you prove the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. It's not the camera because that's just loud noises. <sighs> that's why he hates me. When we found this one. It was found in the victim's body. Two shots went off. We have we have one bullet. I can stand to lose a little life. Oh. This is my evidence. I'm right away. But this pistol is bothering me, Your Honor. Both the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. But the murder weapon was fired three times. One of them was the last shot fired. Only now I realized the truth. The third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order. Order. Hmm. That makes sense. As it would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, it seems you're wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Literally, that's what we're here to find out. You're just taking up time, my guy. Exactly. This is true. There were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? No. Better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Um. What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Oh yeah, of course, I remember. The murder in this case. The same idea as the murder in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes. I don't figure this out. We'll never return it with a guilty verdict. I know! <laughs> we all know. Got a hunch. And I'm gonna run with it. You're right. I mean, this is safe. Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing else to lose. You just watch. And let me know if I say something that sounds fishy, okay? Right now. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. Testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tisk tisk tisk. So, it finally revealed the truth. There will be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Nuh uh. Wrong, Von Karma. The man, a man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. No, no, no. Listen, Rocky. Take a deep breath. Consider the facts. I bet. At the time of the murder, one boat was out of the lake. It was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Holland, were on the boat. Ben. <laughs> there was a gunshot fire on the boat. Robert Holland fell in the lake. The distance the shot was one meter. It couldn't have been blank. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man of the boat. I mean, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but that assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. It turns up with the photo. Says 0015. But Larry heard gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot of the lake. It's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Yes, thank you! Explain who the two men on the boat were. It would be Edgeworth. And the uh, 
this is what we all think, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not do that. And I'm just gonna attack. Of course, there's that worth. And the murderer. Out of the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50. We assumed the guy's Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. A night. Robert Hammond called Edgeworth the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything, and the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. Murderer's name? Right, it's. I don't know. <laughs> I was losing points. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. Woo! You don't know. Again, you waste my time! I don't know. He never told us. The murderer is scared to get the book shop. That old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Holland. The caretaker boat shop. Where do you do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. I have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone. I suggest the real scene of, the, of this crime was not an unboat. Wong? Well, then, where did the murder take place? Where the judge where the murder took place? You are asking a tall order from me. I think he's saying he's here. Take that! Yeah, of course. The boat shop, where he lives. That way, he could meet the victim without anyone seeing it. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. <laughs> that night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds out returns to the boat. He says he's standing ready to head, ho head for home. He hears a gunshot. Heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat shop. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened the night at Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. <laughs> I cannot. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, I get slow, I might be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to a shop. Bang. It was around 11.50. That's when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. Of that, the caretaker put Robert Holland's coat. He became Robert Holland. Then he got to the boat from Edgeworth, then went out into the middle of the lake. He fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright. Uh, sure. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both Miss Edgeworth, on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why'd he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations in is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. I don't believe any of it. I'm making stuff up. Let's create a witness. Sounds like a fun fantasy adventure. I think you shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. Then he shows that anyone who heard the shot would look at the link. 
and indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that appearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires it again. Then... Scream. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. There's someone looking from the edge of the lake. It appeared that one of the men in the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The lost caretaker swam back to the shop. And he put Mr. Holland's wet coat back on his body. He threw the body into the lake. That's what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. I don't think so. I really don't, because it... Obviously, one of the bullets went into Mr. Hammond. I really don't think so. But I don't know what could have happened. Because my brain is not working. But I don't think it was that. Bailiff. We got the witness from before. First up, caretaker, quickly. Very well. Well, we're waiting for the caretaker. I'd like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. God, your head is so small. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense said. Yes. Well? Why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Holland. He asked me to come to the boat shop at the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Really important. I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. <sighs> Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared! <laughs> He's not at the post shop either. Huh? What should I do? Find him quickly. We can't allow him to get away. Mr. Monacoma, your witness has disappeared. The search warrant has already been issued. You're doing great, Von Karma. A real, real shoe in. Mm. Which thus saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will send the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request the police department to utilize all its force to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. This who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to the trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. We did it by making everything up. December 27th, 1.22 p.m. District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 2. Yay, Nick! We did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out of... from under that guilty verdict. What about Larry? Oh, something else. Even Von Palmer didn't know what to do with his testimony. That really helps us out. Sure. Once I sifted through his unique testimony. He does say this. This wish on it. Cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. I just feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You can try to smile a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. Oh. Oh, uh, where... Do I save this? 
Do I save it for later? You know what? I will. I'm gonna end this episode here, and then we can save. What's so troublesome? and hopefully I'll see you later.